Welcome to Washington Hospital Today, the program dedicated to sharing timely information about the community hospital that's been taking care of Washington Township Healthcare District residents since it opened in 1958. Washington Hospital Today is provided for the sole purpose of informing residents about healthcare topics and issues that have been covered during community forums, free health and wellness classes, or as part of educational sessions held during the district's open board meetings. This program is one more way that Washington Hospital helps empower you, the residents of the district, by providing information needed to make informed decisions about your health. Today's presenter is Cynthia Hunter. Cynthia is a registered nurse for Washington Hospital Healthcare System and has served on the night shift on the medical surgery floor for the past seven years. Cynthia earned her Bachelor of Science in Nursing from San Jose State University. Cynthia was awarded the DAISY Award, a designation for extraordinary nursing care. She continues to actively participate in projects to improve the quality of patient care for Washington Hospital. I worked on medical surgical floor, night shift, graveyard shift, and I see a lot of patients coming in with kidney failure, and usually they either have high blood pressure or a history of diabetes, so they're all linked together. So I'm going to present the diabetes domino effect of ABCs. This one, I got it from the CDC website, the snapshot of the diabetes in the United States. 29.1 million people have diabetes. One out of four do not know they have diabetes. 86 million people have prediabetes. One out of nine do not know they have prediabetes. Without weight loss and moderate physical activity, 15 to 30% of people with prediabetes will develop type 2 diabetes within five years. Medical costs for people with diabetes are twice as high as for people without diabetes. Risk of death for adults with diabetes is 50% higher than for adults without diabetes. People who have diabetes are at higher risk of serious health complications such as blindness, kidney failure, heart disease, stroke, loss of toes, feet, or legs. Risk factor for type 2 diabetes, being overweight, having a family member history of having diabetes, having diabetes while pregnant. You can prevent these or delay type 2 diabetes by losing weight or eating healthy. Manage diabetes by working with a health professional, eating healthy, and staying active. So what is diabetes? So when you eat food, the glucose come from food that contain carbohydrates such as starch, sugar, rice. So the food going to your mouth and then stomach and then it turns into glucose. Glucose then enter your bloodstream from the small intestine. And then the blood then carry that glucose to the muscle and to the brain. So you have a hormone called insulin that convert sugar or glucose or starch or other food into energy. High level of blood glucose from defect insulin production or action can lead to serious health complication. There is type 1 diabetes. That one is your body doesn't make enough insulin or not at all. So there's no known way to prevent type 1. So usually those patients are on insulin. Type 2 diabetes is where you do have insulin, but they're not, the, your body cannot use the insulin properly. So, you know, the sugars are not being controlled. So you go into hyper, high blood sugar or uh, low. So most cases, this can be prevented. And then another one is gestational diabetes. Now this is when you get it during your pregnancy. Your child can develop it later in life or you, as a pregnant woman, after a pregnancy, you can develop it if you don't take care of yourself. 
So you'll develop uh, type 2 in the future. A little uh, quick overview of signs and symptoms of abnormal blood sugar. Like you have hypoglycemia is when you have low blood sugar and you'll feel shaky, fast heartbeat, sweating, dizziness, anxious, or you're like irritable. Then you check your sugar and see what it is. And if you see it's low, treat it. You could, you know, get a uh, like a hard candy or get some sugar in, and then um, recheck it 15 minutes later and see if it work. If it doesn't, if it's still low, just take some more. But keep a record of like when it was low and what you did and what works and what didn't. And then the other one is hyperglycemia, where you're like really, really thirsty and you're hungry, and then you feel like you gotta go all the time to uh, urinate, and then you, you have uh, drowsiness, blurry vision. So again, check your sugar, see what your number is, and then keep record and call your healthcare provider and update. They can adjust your insulin or medication or diet. So the complications of diabetes, mostly it affects the organs. I'm going to go over most of it. These are some of it. You will have skin problems from being a, di a complicated diabetes, eye problem, which is called ret retinopathy, foot problem, kidney problem, and then you have gastroparesis where you have a delayed gastro emptying. You have a high blood pressure. You can develop stroke and also mental health issue. Skin complication, like you'll have like a frequent bacteria infection where you get like styles and boils, folliculitis, and then infection around the nails. This is a, just an example of one of the diabetic hand with like, you know, skin infection. You can also get a fungal infection too, usually around the warm, moist skin fold area, like under the breast fold or a groin area where bacteria likes that warm and moist area, it grows. The prevention, of course, control your sugar and you bathe with warm, a warm, mild soap and then uh, apply thin layer of like a skin cream, cream to keep your skin nice and moist, but not moist enough to grow infection, but prevent like dryness. So another one is eye complication. So the high blood sugar, it damages the wall of the small blood vessel in the eyes, and which can lead to blurry vision, blindness, you know, like where you get glaucoma, cataracts. And I mean, there's good news, you can get surgery done, but why do you want to go all the way there when you can prevent it? So you do the regular eye checkup, continuous tight blood sugar control, and then the blood pressure control too. The next one is foot complication. So the abnormal increase in blood glucose, it damages the nerve and it can cause narrowing of the blood vessel as well. So you'll have like numbness and tingling and you'll have, you also have like decreased feeling of pain in your feet, the poor blood supply to foot wound, it leads to slow healing, and then you develop infection, which leading to losing of your limbs. Prevention, you want to inspect your, if you're diabetic, you want to inspect your feet daily and keep it clean, dry. You want to avoid extreme temperature, like extremely hot or cold, because you can't feel that temperature so you won't know if you're if you get a burn or not so that's why you want to avoid extreme temperature and then you know elevate your feet when you're going to be sitting for a long time the next one is a kidney problem from the complication of diabetes so the elevated glucose level it increases the speed of blood flow to the kidney it put a strain on the filtering of the glomeruli it raises a blood pressure. So kidney problem, it develops over time. It's slow and it's a silence to see with, you can catch it by early sign. You can do this by checking for blood or protein in the urine. And then you can also see your hand and feet or face swelling. Those are the sign you wanna look up for. The kidney will gradually lose their filtering ability and the waste and the excess water are build up in the blood, so that's why you have that swelling. Eventually, it will leading to incurable kidney disease. 
which will require you to have a dialysis or a kidney transplant. The prevention, of course, tight control of blood sugar, blood pressure, and cholesterol. So the healthcare team, you are the most important member of the healthcare team. Of course, there's nurse, nurse practitioner, diabetic educator, your own primary doctor, the dentist is also important, eye doctor, foot doctor, the pharmacist, they need to know what kind of medication you're taking and then they can also suggest. And then the mental health counselor, social workers, friends and family are also important. They're all combined as your healthcare team. So what I want you to uh, take home is know your diabetes ABC. ABC stand for, A stand for A1C test. B is for blood pressure, C is for cholesterol. What is A1C test? A1C test is a blood test that measure your average blood sugar level in the past three months. So if you go test it tomorrow morning, that's, it'll give you a summary of what your level been in the past three months. Um, why is it important? Well, the high level of blood sugar can harm your heart, blood vessels, kidneys, feet, and eyes. So what is our goal for this A1C? Well, many people with diabetes, is we want it below seven, but everyone is different based on, you know, you have to talk to your doctor and um, set a goal. And what you should do, usually if you're uh, diabetic, you want to test it every three months until you reach your goal level. B, blood pressure. Blood pressure is the force of your blood against the wall of your blood vessels. Why is it important? High blood pressure means your heart is working too hard. When your heart is working too hard, it can cause heart attack, stroke, and it can damage your kidney and eyes, like I mentioned earlier. What is the blood pressure goal? Most people with diabetes, we would want it to be 130 systolic over diastolic number 80. But then again, you know, consult with your doctor because everybody is different, but this is in general what we want you to have as a goal. So what should you do? Get a blood pressure check regularly. Like every visit, they will check it. And then healthy diet. You want to eat food low in salt, high in potassium. That can lower your blood pressure. And then maintain healthy weight and physical activity because obesity can increase your risk for high blood pressure. And quit smoking, because smoking can raise your blood pressure and put you at a higher risk for heart attack and stroke. And you wanna limit alcohol intake, because alcohol also raises your blood pressure. And then taking your blood pressure medication as prescribed. Cholesterol, C. There is a cholesterol uh, fat from food. So there are two lipids I want to uh, identify. The LDL, which is the bad cholesterol. It builds up plug and clog up your blood vessels, and it can cause heart attack or stroke. The HDL is a good one. That's what you want in your body. It helps remove the bad cholesterol from your blood vessels. So what are our goals for this? It's different from, once again, person to person. But from the American Diabetes Association goal, the LDL is less than 100 in general. But if you have cardiovascular disease, the CVD, you want it less than 70. And then the goal for men, for HDL level, you want it more than 40. Woman, you want it more than 50. And then the TG is a, a triglyceride. Those are also important. So you wanna, the goal is you wanna increase HDLs and lower the LDLs. How do we do this? You wanna exercise briskly for 30 minutes, five times a week, and it can increase HDLs about 5%, just doing exercise alone, so. And you wanna quit smoking, you wanna lose weight, alcohol in moderation. Again, I saw, in one of the studies is that it linked to increasing the HDL because that's what we want to do. We want to increase the HDL. But if 
you've never drank before, don't go out there and start drinking. Just talk to the, your doctor first because, you know, medication and alcohol, usually they don't go well together, so you have to check with your physician. Another one finding is the red wine is that it lower the LDLs because that's what we want to do. And then the dark chocolate, dark and sweetened cocoa powder in moderation. Again, the words moderation. So how do we increase HDL in food? You want to avoid saturated fats and trans fats like red meats, bacon, lard, cream cheese, sour cream, butter, all those yummy stuff. But you know, you can get low fat cheese, low fat butter substitute made with olive oil and you still can have bacon, it's, go for turkey bacon instead. And then instead of just regular milk, you want to go for 1% or like a skim milk and still enjoy those. And then the unsaturated and polyunsaturated fats such as nuts, they're really good for you in increasing the HDLs. And then you want to eat omega-3 fatty acid containing foods such as avocados, fish like salmon, albacore tuna, sardine, salad, recommendations eight ounce per week if you can. And then the good protein, you can get it from the soy milk, tofu, recommended one that was uh, 25 grand per day. It reduces cholesterol by seven to 6%. And then the whole grains such as barley, oatmeal, brown rice. So this is what your artery look like in the blood flow. The left one is the, uh, the healthy, normal blood flow in the normal artery, and the right one is where you've got blood built up. You see how the blood, you get very little blood flow going through there. So cholesterol and heart disease. Coronary artery disease, or CAD, is where the narrowing of arteries by fatty deposit, which uh, in the picture, which uh, reduce blood supply, causing a heart attack, or MI. In other words, myocardial infarction. Chest pain leading to arms, back, jaw, neck, or stomach, and then sweating, nausea, fatigue. Those are the signs to look out for when you're going um, having a heart attack. And then also the cholesterol can cause heart failure. You'll have shortness of breath, you'll start feeling weak, nausea, fatigue, and then you'll notice swelling up the feet and then go like when you press it down, it's like it doesn't come up, it'll just like stay dimpled. And then another one is peripheral artery disease or PVD. It decreases blood flow to your lower extremities. You'll have numbness, tingling, pain, or slow healing sores. The heart disease and stroke are number one cause of death and disability among people with type 2 diabetes. 65% of people with diabetes died from some form of heart disease or stroke. Adults with diabetes are two to four times more likely to have heart disease or a stroke than an adult without diabetes. So I wanna go over a little bit about heart attack or MI. The signs and symptoms to look out for one of look out for when the patient's having a heart attack or you are having a heart attack, you'll feel chest pain, chest pressure, it's kind of like a squeezing or like chest fullness, and then you have a hard time breathing, shortness of breath, sweating, you feel lightheadedness with or without chest pain, and then you'll have discomfort in the arm, back, jaw, neck or stomach area with, that, with or without chest pain, and then you have a dizziness, and really getting tired or you get anxiety or you feel like there's, you feel like there's something bad's gonna happen, the, um, they call it impending doom. What you should do, usually when you're having a heart attack, you're by yourself, I mean, so call 911. I mean, first few minutes can save you, uh, save your life. And then if you're by yourself, what you can do f to save your life is you, uh, you wanna, have a keep it breathing and have a pulse so that you could do this by deep breathing or cough vigorously and frequently because the uh, heart attack it has to do with the circulation so when you're coughing you're kind of helping yourself doing a CPR like you're coughing pressing the heart to work pump the blood out and then if you have aspirin in hand just chew your aspirin and then if you're carrying nitroglycerin tablets 
per doctor prescription, go ahead and take that. And then if you're wearing tight clothing, clothing, try to loosen up to get proper blood flow. So this is from the American Heart Association. So it tells you what's the difference between cardiac arrest and heart attack. The cardiac arrest is, has to do with the electrical. And then the heart attack is, has to do with the circulation because you have that block artery. So remember, you're doing a, that cough. So just remember that one. So now I'm going to move on to the cholesterol and stroke. It's where the blood clot blocks a blood vessel in the brain or neck. You're unable to move, speak, think, or feel pain. So the sign and symptom you would feel would be numbness, weakness on one side of the body. You look, you're confused, you have a trouble understanding, trouble talking or uh, walking, or you'll start losing balance while you're walking. And then you also have vision problem or you'll start seeing double. And then you have a severe headache. So the sign of stroke. So this is a easier way to remember it. It's called FAST. FAST, F stands for face. You look, you ask, if you think somebody's having a stroke, you ask them, can you smile for me? And then usually when somebody smiles, you should see a symmetry on their face. Like they should have the same, you know. But on a stroke patient, you'll see one side's kind of droop. Or you can look in the mirror and um, at assess yourself that. And then the arm, A for arm. And one arm, you ask them to, oh, lift both of your arms up at the same time. And then one will be drifted down on a stroke patient. So that's other sign that you, you can see in the stroke patient. And then speech. They'll either talk like really like garbly, slur speech, or they have a difficulty repeating a simple and uh, like a sentence you say, the sky is blue, can you say that? And they can't even say it. So, and then so, I mean, it's time to call 911 immediately. So sign for stroke is fast, face, arm, speech, and time. So taking control and, you know, having diabetes is not like, okay, you get a shot and you're done. No, it's, it's you gotta, it's a, it's a life, Process, it's a life change, it's lifestyle changes you gotta do. So it's very stressful. So first thing you wanna do is how to cope with having diabetes. Because stress can also raise your blood sugar. So try to find relaxation techniques like meditation or listening to the music or doing your hobbies, taking for a walk and stuff like that, whatever calms you down and recognize what calms you down and repeat that. And then you can go to support groups like here, or you can do it in person like you're doing now, or you can go online. The little joke said, when life's give you lemons, make lemonade with slender, because diabetic. And then you want to maintain a healthy weight. You want to be active for 30 minutes or more each day. You want to start slow, taking 10 minutes walk, and then three times a day. And then you also want to try to increase your muscle strength. Uh, you can use stretch bands yoga, swimming is really good on people for the exercise. And then healthy habits, like if you're smoking, quit smoking. There's a number there you can call to help quit. And then you want to limit alcohol consumption. And make sure you take your medication as prescribed. Don't stop it because you feel better today. And then if, if the medications are bothering you, giving you side effects, let your doctor know there are other medication they can give or you know they can change it eating well so the eating will start with meal planning there is a website in the cdc website uh, where they have really neat recipe site little quick recipe site there's a lot of it that you can go to for uh, cooking it's under tasty recipe so portion size does matter when you're preparing meal for yourself, you want half the plate to have the vegetable and fruit, one fourth of your plate to have protein, and then the one fourth to have grains in them. You wanna choose food that are lower in calories, lower in saturated fat, lower in trans fat, lower sugar and lower salt. And then intake more fibers like whole grain cereals, bread, crackers, rice, or pasta. And fruits, vegetables, they're low fats. Again, like skim milk, cheese, 
nuts, fish, avocado, vegetable oils. And then you want to try to drink water instead of soda or juice. And again, limit alcohol. So, um, so you, you did your diet healthy, picking out the healthy diet and stuff. So another thing you can do is having a routine care to have, stay healthy. So again, you want to check your A1C re test results every three months until you meet your goal. And then I think it, then the doctor will say, oh, you can um, cut it down to twice a year once you met the goal. But everybody goal is different. Yearly tests, you want to do cholesterol tests, you want a complete foot exam, dental exam to check for your teeth and gum, and then you get a dilated eye exam to check for any eye problem, get flu shots. And then about, and then for the, to test for the kidney problem, you want to have the urine and a blood test uh, to check for that. Check your medical plan. I know on there that it says the Medicare cover some of the tests like for example, if you're at risk for high, high blood pressure, if you have high blood pressure, history of abnormal cholesterol or triglyceride levels, if you have obesity, history of high blood sugar, if two or more of these apply to you also, like you're 65 or older or overweight, or uh, family history of diabetes, history of gestational diabetes, or you deliver a baby weighing more than nine pounds, then I think that, that there's a Medicare that cover the test, but your doctor may recommend for you to get more service, like more tests, often than the Medicare covers, so that's why it's important to check with your Medi-Cal. Also, the, it, the Medi-Cal also covers some of these costs like diabetes supplies, the medication, the dietitian consultation visit, and then special shoes if you need to. So I want you to end this lecture, take home is know your numbers. You ask your healthcare team, what's your number should be for? Like, what's your goal number for A1C? What should your blood pressure be? What should your cholesterol level be? And then write it down. Your ABC goals will depend on how long you've had diabetes, and if you have other health problems, how hard your diabetes was takes for you to manage. Usually our finger stick blood sugar level, we want the number before meal is a 70 to 120. And then after two hour after you have a meal, it should be less than 160. So just a little joke, I'm not ill, my pancreas just lazy. That's the end of my lecture.